All right, here's my complete guide to spending 10 days in Ireland and exploring as much as possible、uh, without a car because I, I really hate to drive. Okay, buckle in because day one we are landing in Dublin and going to spend at least two nights here. Obviously, this is the biggest city in Ireland, so there's a lot to do and see and eat and drink. I personally loved the Guinness Storehouse. Definitely one of the most touristy things you can do in Dublin, but、uh, hey, you're a tourist. Embrace it and have fun. You can get a pint with your face printed on it and then head up to the rooftop bar for some of the best views of Dublin. And you do get another pint included in your ticket. Now, my favorite place I ate in Dublin was actually a Chinese restaurant called Bullet Duck and Dumplings, where they serve、uh, duck and dumplings. How about that? They were so good, and it's probably a tourist rite of passage to go to Temple Bar. Personally, it was a bit crowded for me, and there are a lot of other spots to see live music in the area anyway. Okay, day three, you're gonna take the Dart train to Hoth, which is a super picturesque coastal village within Dublin. There were waving seals literally greeting us when we got off the train, and you could just make a day trip of it, which I think most people do, but. There is a BB in town where you can stay overnight, and I kind of recommend it because there's a lot to do, a lot of ground to cover. First of all, the Hoth Cliff Walk, easily the most beautiful hike we did on the whole trip. We are talking insane views. You really do reach great heights on this walk with lush greenery, just stunning. And for food, you should head to Octopussy for the best fish and chips, super crunchy, or all the way up to 30 Church Street where they have really nice cocktails. Really nice garlic bread and pizzas. And I'm really glad I stayed overnight because this was the most beautiful sunset spot. And it's onward to day four, where you're going to take the train from Dublin to Cork City. And it's a quick walk from the train station to the city center. Some call this the food capital of Ireland. And I can see why. We did not have one bad meal here. The English market is a must do. They've got everything here. I had some of the best focaccia I've ever had in my life. I can't even tell y'all. And then for dinner, definitely go to Market Lane for their butter torch steaks. Now, day five, we were still staying in Cork, but taking a little day trip to Kinsale on the bus for only 13 euros round trip. This is a beautiful coastal town with colorful shops and restaurants, and you definitely need to do the silly walk where you get the best vantage point of the town. And it ends at Charles Fort, which is just gorgeous. And it feels like a movie scene, really. And cap off the day at Fishy Fishy for some champagne and seafood before heading back to Cork City. And day six, we're gonna do another day trip from Cork, this time to Cove, which is a really quick train ride. This town was the final port of call for the Titanic before it sank and is now home to the Titanic Museum, which I did a whole other video about. You can go check it out. And while you're here, definitely go to Sea Salt for lunch for some of the most gorgeous food I've ever seen. I got the kimchi grilled cheese. Oh my God, it is so good. And day seven, we are switching our home base from Cork to Galway, which is just a train ride away. We did have to switch in Limerick. But again, when you get off the train, you can walk to the city center easily. And there's a reason everyone tells you you have to visit Galway. It's probably the most fun city I visited in Ireland. Definitely head to Dobro's for the best pizzas, then Murphy's for the best ice cream. And at night, go to the Crane Bar, which is like the most lovely traditional music pub. Make sure you go up the stairs. I was like moved to tears by this performance. I'm not even exaggerating at all. Now, on day eight, you're gonna take the Aran Islands ferry from Galway, which takes you past the Cliffs of Moher. But first, you stop in Aran Islands for a day of leisure. You can rent a bike here, explore the whole island. There's really so much to see. I saw seals, I saw baby goats, donkeys, and some insane cliffs at the end of the bike path. It's really a great workout, and then you can reward yourself. With some of the delicious local whiskey at one of the bars. And then on the way back, you do stop to see the famous Cliffs of Moher. You might recognize them from The Princess Bride or the Harry Potter movie, which is another thing to check off your travel bucket list. It really is magnificent. And we really are nearing the end here. Day nine, you can take a train directly from Galway to Westport. And while Galway was the most fun city in Ireland, this was definitely the most beautiful, in my opinion. It's such a charming little mountain town. And if you love oysters and you're up for it after all this activity, you can book a tour of Croke Patrick's Seafood Farm where you'll put your boots on and get the freshest oysters you could ever imagine. I have to say, Westport had hands down my favorite pubs of anywhere we went. And finally, day 10. 
have yourself a nice little breakfast with a view and head back to Dublin to fly home. Now, let me know which spots I miss so I know where to go next time, and there will be a next time very soon. And that's all for today, okay? Bye!